Welcome to Melt. I'm Suresh Venkat. On the show today, we are featuring a conversation with Sir Martin Sorel, Executive Chairman of S4 Capital. Recorded at the Media Monks Cafe in Cannes during the week of the Cannes Lion Festival, this conversation brings us up to speed with S4 Capital's plans for India and how Sir Martin views the intersection of economy, politics, digital and creativity. So let's get ready to melt with Sir Martin Sorel. So Martin. Hi, so here we are in the Media Minds Cafe. We've gone yeah. into the coffee business. True. So what is this draw in can? Why do you keep coming back here? Uh, well, I think, you know, we've been off for a couple of years. So part of it is revenge spending. I mean, you want to get back into the swim. But I, I, I asked myself that question. <laughs> it's a super networking event, but I think it's changed dramatically. It's no longer a festival of creativity. Or if you're being charitable, it's probably a festival of creativity driven by technology, data and technology, mm -hmm. which maybe from an S4 point of view is not such a bad thing. But uh, CES has sort of moved towards CAN and CAN has moved towards CES. Okay. So uh, this is very, as you know, technology dominated. I mean, we have a big presence for the first time probably of Amazon. Uh, huge presence is, as always, with Alphabet and Meta. Uh, but uh, uh, Apple starting to make a, a presence a presence here. You know, obviously, they're building their advertising business too. So um, we've got um, the Chinese probably not as prominent this year as they usually are. Neither, of course, the Russians, quite rightly. And uh, and we uh, probably the highlight was Zelensky's address to the to the advertising industry. What do you think marketers can learn from Zelensky? Well, uh, the value of communications. He, he's Mr. Communicator, isn't he? I so mean, if you were to break quite, it down, quite, the quite, olive t-shirt, the... Uh, that's, the that's, con that's contemporary and, and, and evocative and genuine. I mean, it's uh, all genuine stuff. I mean, he, he, he doesn't dress himself up in a mm -hmm. suit and a tie when he's uh, defend, defending his nation. So, um, no, I think uh, uh, an authentic, highly authentic communicator. And he uses all the channels. I mean... Putin is sort of the complete mm -hmm. polar opposite you know, stage that staged um, show and event that he had uh, and and very very infrequent communications using other people as well. Zelensky is front and center. I mean, spent a very significant period. I mean, Muskian mm -hmm. or Z maybe Musk is Zelenskian uh, in terms of use of social media. But he's a media guy. In fact, a lot of his People surrounding him come from his his media and roots. He's been an actor, so, and a comedian. Yeah, so, and all yeah, so he's so he's a guy who understands the importance and nature of communication, and he's probably one of the great communicators. I mean, a uh, uh, a Roosevelt with uh, with his fireside chats, uh, a Reagan with his communication skills. You know, obviously in a different era. Um, so, the, but using modern and in fact analog media in an extremely effective way. So I think we can learn a lot from him. So Martin, here we are in the middle of the biggest festival in advertising and the biggest players in advertising are not advertising players at all. Google made $215 billion, Facebook $115 and Amazon $25 billion. What do these numbers portend for the future of the classical advertising agency? Well, the, 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 you've got to divide it into two industries and the, the media market you're referring to was about $750 billion last year. Mm -hmm. Of that, about 60%, or well, let's call it 450 billion, was mm -hmm. digital. Google did 225, mm -hmm. Facebook 115, Amazon about 30. This year, probably Google do 230, 235, mm -hmm. Facebook about maybe 130, 135, and Amazon probably around 40. If so you take last year's numbers, you add those two together, 215 plus 115 mm -hmm. plus 30 takes you about 360. So 360 out of 450 in digital came from those three platforms. And 360 out of 750, over half, came from those three platforms. And digital was 450 out of 750, 60. So digital share is 60% now, mm -hmm. last year, will be 70, 75% by 2025. Despite what everybody says about you know, lower GDP growth and recession and everything, digital looks as though on the reframed forecast, on the reloaded forecast, the, re the downgraded forecast, Digital will, will grow by 10 to 15% rather than 15 to 20% this year and over the coming years through to 2025. So from an S4 point of view, and we're totally focused on digital, 
it's not all bad news. It's not as good as it was. Mm -hmm. And if we'd been having this conversation January the 1st, it'd been a very different conversation. We've had withdrawal of COVID stimulus. We've had uh, uh, interest rates rising as a result. We've had inflation going through the oil roof. Price going through we've the had roof. Uh, you know, oil price and commodities going through, through the roof. Uh, we've had uh, zero uh, COVID policy in China with, with long lockdowns. And of course, the most terrible thing being the war. And uh, you know, apart from things like climate change, which are all at the background of these things. So it's a very difficult environment. And the, the GDP forecasts for the world now have been taken down to under 3%, whereas six months ago, it was at probably at four to five. And next year, it, it looks like one and a half to two. But with a lot of pundits, Larry Summers and everybody forecasting significant recession. So uh, it's going to be a tough, uh, and I would say we, we go into a sort of political cycle. I think balance of the year and the next couple of years are not going to be easy. And you know, you know, if you look at the world's biggest economy, which is roughly 25%, 30% of the world, the US at 24 trillion out of 90, 92, 93 tr trillion, until we get into the political cycle, I don't think things are going to change. The midterms, probably, we end up with a a, a democratic public uh, president, you know, left wing de democratic president, a Republican Congress, maybe even House and Senate. Mm -hmm. So maybe deadlock. But they have to wait for the presidential election, and and the reemergence. I, I I would predict probably a Mr. Trump or a Trump look like, and seeing what's happened in France or what's happened in the by elections in the UK, you're going to get increasing polarization, and that opens up the extremes. You know, you're likely to get these swings. You see it in Colombia with Petru. You see it all the time. You know, there's a there's a sort of pink tide in 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 Latin America. They call it um, Lula, of course, going up against Bolsonaro in Brazil. So we're starting to see the extremes. As electorates fail to vote, you know, everybody should vote. I think it should be 100. percent You don't have to vote for the candidates. You can you just have spoil to your ballot vote. if you want. But everybody should make the effort. All right. Let me change track a little bit right now. What is the metaverse all about, and what do marketers need to know that they don't know? Well, it, it's 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 certainly been hyped. Some would say overhyped. It's is very it just a fancy catch-all term for virtual reality and second life. Yes, and I mean it, it, all of that. It, look, it's it's a it's a, a new channel of communication, mm -hmm. virtual communication, and it it's opened up a number of avenues. In our particular case, if we do. Last year we did nine hundred million dollars of revenue. This year we're we're scheduled to do about one point two, one point three billion. Of that, this year I would say thirty to forty million will be metaverse. So of the increment mm -hmm. from nine hundred to one point three or one point two, three or four hundred million, it's only ten percent. But of the overall, it's even smaller. It's only three or four percent. So it's small. And I, I think you have to look at it that way. The healthcare applications are huge. Very important in a in an India, yep. uh, the training applications are huge, pilot training, whatever it happens to be. The education opportunities, I spoke with a Brazilian company uh, training a half a million students a year, high school and, and university. Huge opportunity in to, to teach in a, in a revolutionary way and an extremely effective way. Sports, you know, we, we, we stream uh, 50 or have done for the last three seasons with the NBA, 56 basketball games mm -hmm. and that's been going on for three seasons i mean amazingly three seasons uh virtual reality courtside you know with your with your goggles and everything on verizon using oculus uh hardware so music applications pop concerts huge applications e-commerce applications you know an adidas or a nike you know you're trying on your your shoes or your clothing in with an avatar and virtual reality and you order online etc you send back if not 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 right. So there are huge applications here working from home. So we will become more and more attuned to that as a result of the metaverse. So we mustn't become over enamored with it, but it is important. It is here to stay. And of course, metaverse, Mark Zuckerberg is, is not betting the ranch on it, but it is making significant, but it will be more competitive for them because, you know, Apple will be in there. Microsoft is going to be in there. Gaming is already there. huge applications yeah. there. Yeah. So, really, intra sports applications are huge. 
and gaming as a part of that all. And what do you make of cryptocurrencies or crypto? What, I, what do you call I, them? I don't assets? get it. I'm in the Munger camp. I'm 98 years old on that one. Yeah. And the, and the Buffett camp, and he was 92, 93. He wouldn't buy all the Bitcoin in the world for no. $25. No, no, and no, Charlie wouldn't. And uh, probably Charlie's right. Mm -hmm. He's getting closer to $25 yeah. now. Now, uh, uh, now, on blockchain, yes, because uh, I can see, I can mentally sort of see how blockchain might mm -hmm. improve by eliminating frictions in the marketplace and middlemen and middle women. Mm -hmm. I can see how that can sort of play extremely effectively. But uh, the Bitcoin thing I don't get because if governments or central banks introduce digital coins, what, what are they going to do? It works in a, in a, in a disrupted economy. You know, El Salvador now, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, most of the people who bought Bitcoin in El Salvador are underwater now. Yeah. Um, I think I saw a, a lady on the, I don't know whether she was part of the El Salvador Bitcoin Association, but she said, well, you know, it's, it's, that's the, that's life of Bitcoin. It goes up and it goes down. At the moment, it's underwater, but it'll get back again. I'm not sure I agree. Um, so I think that's risky. And that was a sign of the speculative excesses. Let's talk about S4 Capital. Yeah. When you invest in AdTech or MarTech or any we don't tech invest. Company. We don't invest in AdTech. We use it. Okay. So when we see Unreal Engine, you know, with our studio in New Delhi, and we see our ability to, to develop and content from anywhere in the world from what, that location, we use it. We deploy it. When we see applications of the metaverse, we, de we deploy them. Okay. So we, but we don't invest in ad tech and martech. We've set up this venture capital fund. Mm -hmm. We've got a hundred million dollars that we've raised as a first raise with another 50 probably coming in uh, over time. But the essentially that's where we're putting the tech risk. Mm -hmm. We, we don't invest in tech. We use tech. And one of the things are 9,000 people in 33, 32 countries now, ex Russia, 32 countries can, can do is identify, very good at is identifying the next new thing. Mm -hmm. So that's, we use that knowledge to try and assess what tech we should invest in. So what is the next new thing? Well, I think we're, we're going through it. Metaverse, we've talked about the Unreal Engine we've talked about. So that came out of Fortnite games. The underlying technology is called the Unreal Engine, enables us to shoot you know, high quality video anywhere in the world from one location. And I think probably the, the other thing I call out is TikTok. Um, you know, I've been surprised here, got some information here, which seems to me to indicate that I was probably under calling TikTok by maybe as much as uh, twi uh, twice. So ins instead of being 30 billion a year in terms of ad revenues, there might be double that. So I think there's some really interesting uh, things that are that are taking place. Uh, that we are in the process of developing that will revolutionize the way we're doing. But we don't, you know, I don't, one of the things when we look at deals, we look for growth, we look for top line growth, we look for margins, uh, we look for management ownership, mm -hmm. no separation of ownership and control. Mm -hmm. But the re a really fundamental thing is not being susceptible to technological risk. Speaking of technological risk, Netflix was hailed as the future of ad-free watching. Till recently, they had a road bump yeah. on their journey. Does this put in the end of streaming services that are ad -free? No, no, no. It, it, what it says is that there's a mixed model works. I mean, you know, if you, if I remember John Elkin at the Economist, you know, who owns, I think not, doesn't control it, but I think he owns 40% of the Economist saying that over the next 10 or 15 years, the Economist won't be based on advertising, be based on subscription as well. Mm -hmm. The subscription will be, will be even more important. What it tells you is that, uh, an ad only model, uh, uh, or a subscription only model may not necessarily be the, the best thing. Uh, last year, YouTube generated about 30 billion mm -hmm. of that 215 or whatever it was at, at Alphabet. 30 billion of that came from advertising on YouTube, advertising model. Netflix generated 30 billion of subs from, by Netflix. You know, we've always said, and why not go down the Spotify model? You know, if you have Spotify, I, I have Ad supported Spotify. I don't pay for yeah. it. I get it for free. Yeah. Right. Uh, but you know, some people think that's anathema and that's, uh, that's, a, that's a joke. Um, but no, I think they're doing, Netflix is definitely doing the right thing. They, they've had a presence here. I think next year they'll be back in force. I think Apple will continue to build its, uh, base here. It's not traditionally been somebody that's been at, uh, been at Cannes, but they're building, they have a, uh, that's another new shiny thing that, 
the Apple ad platform is about 10 billion, you know, with the changes in IDFA. I mean, they've sucked in revenue, yep. obviously, from Metaverse, maybe from Snap as well. And so I, I so I think you are going to continue to see the Disney Plus ad supported. So they will be here in force, uh, both at CES, I think, and, and, and which has moved towards Cannes, as I said, and Cannes, which has moved to CES. And the world of technology seems to be dominated by either monopolies or very strong duopolies. Well, you'll, you'll be you using emotive language now. Yeah, so the mon monopoly is defined as what is it? 100%? A natural monopoly, not, not an well, artificial monopoly. Well, some monopoly. people think it's unnatural. A near, a near natural monopoly. You know, the war has demonstrated that technology is really important. Mm -hmm. When the Germans will spend 4% of GDP on defense, a large part of that's not going to go to tanks and missiles and military personnel, but a large part is going to go to tech too. And what, what, what the war has said is, it's, you know, shown that understanding tech and having a strong tech economy is really essential from a defensive point of view, mm -hmm. let alone offensive, you know, cyber offense and defense. I don't underestimate, I think, the importance of these big tech companies. It's important to have a balance, right? To have small, small tech as well and a strong tech infrastructure. The other thing that the tech companies have not done, and, and I think they must do more of it to make their, their, they've done some of it is to, you know, and this applies to all of them generically. They are the engine of small business. The guy who did this brilliantly was Jack Ma at Alibaba, not so much recently for the obvious reasons, but historically he positioned Alibaba as the, the sort of Chinese entrepreneur's friend, as the platform to develop Chinese entrepreneurial activity. The platforms, you know, without, without Alphabet, without Google, without Meta, without Facebook, WhatsApp, etc. Without Amazon, the amount of un unemployment and the, the 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 need for even greater government send subsidy would have been huge. I mean, the government's put ten to fifteen trillion in to support businesses and society, quite rightly, during COVID, against the worldwide GDP of nineteen trillion. It was huge. Don't underestimate how important these platforms are. And and the way you see it in China, you know, the Chinese government. Crack down on the platforms in relation to gaming, in relation to private edu education, and a num number of number of things. I think you're starting to see that 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 sort of foot off the brake. They won't be able to make acquisitions, you know, the Vestiga or FTC, whatever, uh, Department of Justice, whatever will will not let them acquire. But they'll. I think the atmosphere has improved. So in a way, with COVID. The healthcare companies became more trusted. I think as a result of the war, sadly, I mean, obviously for in both cases, it takes a crisis if you, to see this. The importance of tech, the underlying importance of tech is greater. Let's talk about India, Sir Martin. Yeah. Uh, do you think the next decade will be India's decade as yeah, we so all I th think it I th is? I think when I look at the world, you know, sort of during this war, uh, or these five things that we talked about, mm -hmm. withdrawal of COVID stimulus through to the war. Uh, that pressure uh, and, and the reduction of globalization, I mean, it's not that global, global growth is going to be less than it was. The reason being investment policy and, and government policy can be more regional, more national. So CEOs in their, in their drive for growth, they're going to have to pursue a much more refined growth policy geographically and a much more refined policy on technology and technological uh, application. On the geography side, North and South America are risk on. You know, you invest. Uh, Middle East, you invest. You invest in parts of Africa, more difficult because of volatility. And in Asia, question mark about China and Taiwan, but, you know, full bore on India, full bore on Vietnam, on Indonesia, on Malaysia, on the Philippines, Bangladesh, and Cambodia. I mean, it, the, the, these are countries that are going to benefit mm -hmm. uh, from the growth that we see. So there'll be risk on in those. And of course, the region that is going to suffer the most, I think, and you see it in the hedge fund activity, you know, Ray Dalio and everybody, is Central Eastern Europe and, and, and Europe. And I, and I think the, the, the short to medium term for France, Germany, Italy, Spain, the UK is not good. When's your next trip to India and what as are your soon plans as possible. for India? I mean, being a naughty boy, I haven't been there for a couple of years mm -hmm. and I should get off my backside and go. And tell us about S4's interest in India. No, it's good. It's doing well. It's growing rapidly. 
um, Paul and Robbie and, and the crew are doing doing well, but it has to be because so when we look at geography, we said before the war, we were 40 percent. We our objectives were 40 percent North and South America, 20 EMEA and then 40 percent Asia. Um, I think as a result of the war, we're going to have to modify that to 60, 20, 20, which means we have to double up in India with everything else standing still, which means we have to be double the size in India. Now, it's a, it's a good it's a good business there, and it's working well, particularly on the content side. But we have to develop our data and analytics and digital media side, and we have to de develop our tech services side. Right? Because like South America, where we have three and a half thousand people, India, out of 9,000, India is a tremendous nearshoring, offshoring opportunity. And more importantly, it has tremendous tech and creative talent. And, you know, probably doesn't get the uh, the attention uh, and the the awards that they deserve. They probably should get more, disproportionately more. I mean, this well, is, you managed five Grand Prix this year. Well, you did, yes. Yeah. It, it gets better every, 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 every time, but, but probably it should be even more. Final question. What is Sir Martin like after hours? What do you do to relax? I wa I, I, I've watched a fair bit of the IPL, actually. I mean, over the past... You consider IPL to be cricket? Do I consider IPL? No, yes. I love test cricket. But I, you know, I, I like uh, white ball cricket as well and pink ball cricket. You know, listen, I think from a commercial point of view... It's, it's phenomenal. Uh, but is it cricket? Been absolutely right. You know, if you were born today, you would say it was cricket. Uh, but the answer is, you're, you know, when work is what you like doing, it, the boundary between work and play is diminished. That may be a bad thing, by the way. But so you, you so you're the, Sir Martin all the, the time. The two, the two merges in uh, into one. All right, Sir Martin Sorrell, thank you for talking. Thank to you us very on much, Sir Richard. And, and uh, terrible news about Anant. I must say that on camera. He was a uh, great our, friend. He was my mentor. He was mentor. a great, yes. great advisor. A lovely, wonderful man. A lovely gentleman. Like cricket too. Mm -hmm. Wonderful moustache. Mm -hmm. uh, and beard. Um, it's just tragic. And it happened so quickly. And it's so, so sad. So it is I said, uh, what we say, we say we wish him, and well, we wish his family long life. And uh, as I say, sad, the world will be a poorer place without him. I cannot agree more. Thank you so much. That's a wrap on this episode. You can follow Melt on social media. The handle is ready to melt or simply log on to readytomelt.com. If you'd like to follow me, it's at Suvenk on Twitter. Till next week, goodbye and thanks for watching. <laughs>